welcome you all and thank you for joining us for today's workshop on technology use in teaching of social science. My name is Kushbu and I'm going to be your host for this evening. TD Educational and Charitable Trust is one of the leading providers of educational services and consultation from Bangalore, India. I am sure you all already understood what TD Act aims at in the future and at present. Of course, we want to give the collaborative platform to the teaching fraternity so that we all can stay updated with the teaching trends. For, the say, for providing us with this platform, I thank our trustee, Mrs. Lata Mishra, and also invite our managing trustee, Dr. G. Thangadurai, sir, who is the backbone of this project. Dr. G. Thangadurai is not only a distinguished educationist and the director principal of Presidency Group of Schools, Bangalore, but is also a seasoned administrator, a prolific writer, eloquent speaker, and a commendable teacher who was proudly awarded prestigious national award for his contribution in the field of education by the former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Sir is also selected as one of the best 50 effective principles of 2020 by an esteemed jury panel. Of course, this honor was given for displaying his exemplary trait of sincerity, dedication, and hard work. Under Sir's guidance, Presidency School, Bangalore, Kasturi Nagar, Bangalore, ranks number three in Indra Nagar zone under the category of national curriculum. Without further ado, I would like to invite Sir to kindly address the gathering. Good evening to all. Good evening and thank you, Kushbu, for that introduction. Uh, good, be, good evening, Vijaya, who is behind the scene, accommodating the participants and connecting with them. Uh, good evening, our esteemed speakers, Mita, Kulkarni, and Roshni. We also thank Lata Mishra, who is our trustee of for creating this platform. And uh, Kushbu may have given a long profile of mine, but I thank God that I went through all these experience to enable me to share my experiences with the teachers. That is the greatest fulfillment that I could ever have. And this TD Educational Trust provides the platform for us to share our experiences and to ensure that we not only support the teachers, but also mentor them with regard to any new initiatives in the educational scenario. I welcome all the participants we have about 95 participants registered for this evening. And uh, out of that, we have 11 participants from Middle East, Oman, Kuwait, and Sur also from Oman. In addition to that, we have around more than 80 participants from Orissa, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and Karnataka. It's my great pleasure that I'm connected to so many teachers. And participants, you should also take this opportunity to connect with teachers across the country. And I personally welcome the participants from Middle East that you get connected with India and the teachers of India. And we look forward to your active participation. Well, <clears throat> coming to the topic, today we have been having the same topic for different subjects. 
use of technology in the teaching of mathematics, use of technology in the teaching of science, use of technology in the teaching of English. And now today, this evening, we have use of technology in teaching of social science. We are privileged to have two practicing teachers who have been doing a commendable work in exploring and enriching the online classes using technology to connect the remote children. Technology, we need to see not as a standalone means of communication, means of showing presentations, means of teaching through content, but more than anything else, we should look at technology as a holistic approach to, tech, to learning. And uh, technology today has come to stay. Though I hope in many of our cities and even in Middle East, I suppose, students have started coming in, especially the high school students for writing the mock examinations or for doubt clarifications. But hopefully next session, we'll have a normal classes, but still I say technology has come to stay. Our teachers have been immersed, immersed in technology for the whole year. It is not a simple immersion. It's a process of exploration discovery that they have made to a great extent on their own initiative and through orientation and connections and webinars and an occasion like this, that online teaching has been enhancing in terms of from level one to level two. And, and that is how we are going to progress. And in future, technology will become an integral part. So why? Because technology helps with engagement. And it also connects with families. Today, our parents are an integral part of our system, education system. And they are in fact in charge of homeschooling. And um, uh, today also I met some parents who say, it's a great challenge that they have to take care of their family, they take care of their work at home, and they take care of the children. You see, I see some uh, mothers, you know, cooking and ensuring that the child of four and five is there uh, attending the classes. So it's, it's a great challenge. And I think we should thank the parents for their support. And we should thank the teachers who took technology with a bitter pill to swallow in the beginning because it was something new, something sudden, but then they rose to the occasion in a manner that they not only were self-directed, self-motivated, and they also developed a lot of network, peer learning, learning through other friends, and they rose to the occasion and uh, made possible education to continue and enable the students to continue learning. We haven't come to the category of frontline wa front warriors, but definitely they are the backbone of education today. Today education is there and CBSE is now in a position or ICAC is now in a position to conduct board examination. It is because of the initiative, consistency and the sustainable way in which the teachers embraced technology and took the on learning to a respectable heights. So it prepares the students for future. Now technology is also going to prepare now with the introduction of according to the national education policy, the introduction of various 
uh, technologies, uh, in terms of experiential learning, we are going to prepare the children for their future. Inspire the students to discover new talents. Today, our speakers will show and share some of the technological usage through which we engage students, we can engage students and help them to discover new talents in terms of creativity, in terms of innovation. And therefore, I think it's, it would be nice to stop and think, why is technology important? I want to put this question to the audience, or sorry, to the participants. And I would like you to answer, why is technology important? Let's start with that question. This is our topic for today. So there is an answer in the chat box, which yeah. says, I think for the previous question, um, it says development. And for this question, why is this topic important for you? Uh, the answer is to make learning effective. And Ms. Vijay Lakshmi says, without which uh, this session is not at all possible, which is without technology, the session is not possible at all. Yeah. And there is another answer by Ms. Seema Mahesh, who says to make teaching and learning effective. Uh, Ms. Veena feels that this is important for our own growth. And Ms. Revati says that we need this because more information is given to the students, probably on the online platform and through technology. Uh, Sumati, ma'am, also says that this is important to make teaching interesting. And Mr. Suresh says that uh, this is important to know more about the latest technology. Well, thank you. That was an overwhelming response. Uh, that's, that's, that's the way we begin in the session. Well, one of the evidence uh, that uh, I would like to share, and I hope you have also shared the same thing in some way or the other, is technology of itself doesn't enhance learning. It depends. It depends on how technology is designed. Uh, that's how our speakers would be sharing this evening and implemented. How teachers are supported, that's very important. Today, this session is to support teachers and also invite teachers on a collaborative mode uh, platform if they could also share some of the technology uh, aids that they use for teaching. How outcomes are measured, assessment, how are assessment done? Here again, our speakers would be sharing some aspects. What communities, communities here, the management, the teachers, the parents, all of us are together. This is a very interesting that all of us have come together and we are playing a very strategic role, each one of us, in some way or the other. So, you look at this picture. I hope uh, our participants could make out what this picture is about. Can anyone, either in the chat box or you can speak? So according to Ms. Vijay Lakshmi, this is scaffolding, and I also request the participants to please unmute and you may give the response. Uh, yes. Uh, this image, this yes. image shows that um, we are guiding the student. Uh, we are just raising our hand uh, to lift the student, upgrade him. Okay. Yeah, we... We, we means teachers, parents, management. And that yellow uh, uh, part of the structure is the school building, which is quite empty. And uh, the teachers, the parents, and the management is trying to uh, hold the child up in terms of learning. 
and the learning is uh, happening because the child is also carrying learning with him as the teachers are all of us are collaboratively supporting the child the child also is being supported in terms of the learning outcomes so that's a very interesting thing and you know uh, technology you know whenever we use we have to be very careful it has to be properly evaluated selected collated curated adapted developed designing all these exercises we have to do we cannot accept technology as it is and then use it uh, I, I, irrespective of the merits of technology we should never forget the background of the educational module which is the foundation of the learning process so this is the the actual old model of bloom's taxonomy where you know the bloom talks about knowledge comprehension application of knowledge analysis synthesis and evaluation the lower three slabs are the lower order of thinking the upper three slabs with the pinnacle as evaluation is the higher order of thinking so i will not go into the detail but i just want to keep this in the background because this is something fundamental on which we have to do the constructivism using technology we cannot technology we cannot use technology on its own merit or whatever apps or kits are available it has to be integrated with the philosophy of education the pedagogy of education the structure of education and the educational module based on which we have been designing curriculum assessment and all that so it was in 1956 that this uh, bloom's taxonomy came out but in 2001 it was modified with more of an action verb where instead of knowledge it became remember instead of comprehension it became understand instead of application it becomes apply means it is all action verb means you put into action and that was in 2001 now according to the summer model which our speakers will be highlighting we are using this educational module using you uh, the this educational module as a base and using technology to transform it to the level of innovation and creativity that is why you see the top most on the right side is create now we start with the substituting technology for certain words like for example if it style has to write a storytelling he may type it now using technology on a word format and then he may improve the story writing by improving its layout grammar check and all that is is augmenting it and then he may modify it using technology where he would try to see how others have written and this modification can come may be facilitated by a teacher who can share this story written by different students using technology either a whether a whiteboard or any of those kits that are available for sharing and make a comparative analysis of how he has written and thereafter he can go to the level of creativity by redefining his work in terms of creating as a a comic strip or creating as a film strip or or making it as a uh, as a video so see technology has taken him from ordinary writing at the substitution level to a creative works where he can transform it into a visual uh, impact of what he used to write in earlier days in a notebook but the most important thing that is required if you want to use technology in its in a proper sense is that we need to use a digital classroom you can't just bring technology into the classroom you must have a very good high speed internet and you should have a kind of a a platform today we are using zoom as a platform without zoom this uh, technology of reaching you will not be possible so in every school i think here the management plays a very important role in creating a digital classroom be it zoom whether it is microsoft 
whether it is a Google for education or whatsoever. So we need to have a proper digital classroom, organize the resources and assignments, access educational technology and software. All these are possible when you have digital classrooms. So technology helps in students uh, personalized instruction. Uh, and it, it helps the, the, the teacher to personalize and connect with students. As a remote teacher, connecting with a remote learner, technology helps. There are so many apps like you have Mobi Max, we have uh, this uh, Freckle, uh, Khan Academy, yes, Khan Academy is a, an example where differentiated learning for every different types of students. I think today our speakers also will share the use of Khan Academy. Integrating social science insights with technological developments. In today's webinar, we will be seeing a few of the tools which will help us to use in this classes so that we can make our teaching learning process more effective. In a normal class, the teacher tries to explain a concept through some activities, which encourage students to learn and understand a concept. But integrating technology adds a whole new layer in the teaching learning process. Here are some of the tools that we can use in social science during various stages of teaching learning processes. Let us now understand these tools with an example. We have taken an example of French Revolution and through the summer model, we will be explaining how we can integrate technology in the social science. As we all know, summer model includes four main categories, substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. Substitution here is where the technology acts as a direct tool to substitute learning with no functional changes. In a normal classroom, the teacher teaches the causes of French Revolution and the student, they take down the notes in the notebooks. But now with the use of technology, they can type the notes in a Word document and later they can put it in a sequential form or in an order by using a tool called as timelines. Next slide, please. Augmentation. Here, there are a few improvements in the teaching learning process with the use of technology. Once the causes are all listed by the students, now they can use another tool, which is called as quizzes. Here, the teacher can use quizzes in order to ask quizzes and they can have it in a very fun manner. And we can, the teacher can also see how much the child has understood by using this particular tool. Modification. Here, the technology allows for a significant task redesign. After having played a few fun games and quizzes, the teacher can ask the students to divide themselves into groups of some five to four students in each group and give them a task to make PPTs, search for a few videos, images, uh, and other important uh, things about a particular topic. Here, the students can learn how to collaborate, interact, and do a lot of research, which will definitely enhance the teaching learning process. Next slide. The last module of the summer model is redefinition. Here, the technology allows the creation of new tasks, which was previously inconceivable in the classroom situation. For example, after presenting the topic, the teacher, can, the teacher can use the tools like Google Maps or Google Street Views to actually take a tour of the places which are related to French Revolution. The students can visit the monuments, important places which are related to that particular topic. Thus, we can see that how technology gives us an opportunity not only us, but also the students, an opportunity to create, to collaborate, to communicate, and also to critically think, which are nothing but the 21st century learning skills. Right. 
So I now request Smita ma'am to take it forward from here. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we are here now. Uh, we basically are going to uh, look at various uh, tools which will basically help us uh, in three categories of our entire learning uh, and teaching process. Uh, what we are going to do right now, uh, these are the tools. We are going to see them into three categories. Tools which will help us uh, in teaching and understanding uh, social science better. Uh, there are tools for collaborative learning since online uh, classroom um, is very different from our, our normal offline classes where we would ensure that every child is uh, participating, every child is interacting, is involved into the teaching learning process. But because of this online and remote learning, uh, it is very difficult for us as teachers uh, and educators to ensure that the child is involved uh, and is understanding what is being taught. So uh, also besides assessments being done at every uh, in every class, we can also ensure there are certain activities where we can involve the entire class. Even when we uh, normally have a class online, even if we only asks, uh, ask the children to answer, we have a selected few who answer and uh, that's it. Then, so how do we ensure that the entire class is involved? There are a few uh, tools um, which we will see, look at uh, how collaborative learning can happen, flipped learning can happen. And there are a few tools uh, on evaluation and assessment. So we are going uh, by Thinglink, Google Street View, Flickr, Whiteboard Fi, Timeline JS, Padlet, Quizzes, and Quizlet. These are a few of the tools that we'll be looking at today. Uh, going to the first one. Uh, this is Thinglink. Uh, Thinglink basically uh, helps in um, teaching a particular uh, concept with uh, at one particular area. Now we can have, uh, we want the children to have the concept maps, mind map written down in their uh, notebooks and they take a note of whatever is happening. Along with that, we want to ensure that uh, whatever they are looking at in the, uh, on the system should be very uh, uh, you know, visually uh, pleasing and also informative and also uh, we are attaining or achieving the uh, learning outcomes or teaching objectives now thinglink basically is uh, looks uh, like this and then i will be showing you all how exactly do we create a, a link a thinglink uh, concept now this is uh, how it looks now, suppose if I have to teach um, students about uh, tropical evergreen forests, I, uh, there are various uh, areas that basically get into it. Like I need to know uh, what are the geographical conditions, what are the animals and plants found in that particular uh, forest, and where exactly do you find uh, the tropical evergreen forests. Now, all these are the important concepts of that particular topic. Now, how do I ensure that children are uh, having uh, visually as well as a uh, concept is very clear to them? So we create this concept map where if I link on this, I click on this tag, it basically shows the important geographical conditions where we have, uh, we note down uh, certain uh, concepts like it is found in areas of 200 centimeters rainfall, uh, has different type, kinds of vegetation, height uh, is, uh, you know, uh, trees are with the height of 60 meters uh, tall and they're multi-layered. Now I want these children to make a note of these uh, important uh, points, value points. So I have this pop-up uh, tab here. Also, I would like to go ahead find uh, telling them about the different plants that are found in this. Now here, I have listed down the names of the trees, but it, it's generally very uh, difficult for children to you know, retain those names until and unless you visually show them the pictures of these plants. So this particular thing link actually helps us to uh, you know, uh, collaborate the pictures as well. So we see the pictures, uh, you can connect it to a PowerPoint slide, and then you can show them here. Uh, basically the different slides are there, different types of trees are there. We can do it this way. Also, we can have the same way I can do it for uh, animals as well. Again, different types of animals that are found in this particular forest. We can show them all the um, animals. 
very important more normally when we look at uh, social science uh, especially with geography uh, children have a problem of retaining the names of the places where they are found, whether it's uh, related to agricultural crops or industries or minerals or in fact um, forests as well. So it becomes very difficult because we, uh, in a normal uh, offline classes, we uh, keep a map on uh, on the board and or probably uh, have a smart board. But then in online classes, how do we ensure we can actually take them there? That basically when I click here, uh, I can connect this uh, thing link to Google Earth so that we we actually take the children over to that places and see how it looks. So this is what um, it looks like. I can connect it to Google Earth. I have already uh, selected just give me a minute. Sorry. Give me a minute, please. I'll just show you how it uh, looks. Just give me a minute. We go on. Uh, I tell you how it is created. We how we link to this. This is basically. Uh, before we enter any class, we keep the uh, data ready. How do we connect with Google Earth? I will be showing it to you here. Um, we have this uh, basically whatever, normally in an offline class as well, we keep uh, the teaching aids, uh, the maps, everything, whatever we want to show to our children. Uh, it's a similar way here. We keep all the uh, pictures, the concept maps, the maps, everything ready. So what I have done is I have kept the uh, data on the, um, desktop itself. So I have my pictures and the concept map, which I have prepared it in the uh, Word document. Now, once this is entire, uh, this is ready, how do I go ahead with thinking? I the link there, and then it takes me to this. This is a search result of thinking. So I go and create one. Uh, you can always uh, create it with Microsoft, Google, uh, in fact, a Thingling account itself, or maybe Facebook account, you can use those. Since I already have it in the uh, Microsoft, I have already logged in here. So this takes into my uh, account here and uh, how it is to be created. You see a create button here, which is being uh, shown on the right hand side. I go to image, I go to continue. I upload the file. As I already showed you that my file was there on the desktop. I use that particular concept map and open it up and I continue. Now the concept map has already come here. So I continue here. You see the concept map has already come into my folder now, into my account. So this is how it looks. This is what I had prepared in Word. Now, how do I tag the tagging, which I had shown you about the areas, plants, and geographical conditions? We are just going to look at that. How to connect it to Google Earth as well, I will show it to you. We have to go to add tag. Now I'm going to look at plants, uh, what are found in this uh, particular uh, region. So I type in the title, plants found uh, in the tropical uh, evergreen forests. I give a description of the types of trees that are found. I just gave two examples. The previous uh, thing link, I showed you a few more there. So ebony and mahogany. Now, along with this, I can also attach pictures, which I had showed there when I connected the entire slides. Now I can basically add two images of the scene. So I add both. So it is already uh, embedded into this uh, slide now. I just go to close. I mean, it closes off. So this is a tag that is being uh, done. So I place it on plants. So whenever I click on this, the plants, uh, entire details about the plants gets in. Now, now I go to the geographical conditions. I do not want to put up any image here. So I just want those uh, key points, value points to be taken down by the students as a note taking as well. I write it down here. Uh, 
uh, now as an uh, demo, I'll just be writing down uh, found in areas of 200 centimeters of rainfall. I do not, as I said, I do not want to add any image. So I just complete the description. You can add all those key value points that you want your students to uh, have it in their notebook. You can put it up there. Then we go to the third tab. Now I want, I said, I will be showing you all how to link it with Google Earth um, areas. Now. Uh, I'm just taking one example where Lakshadweep uh, islands have uh, tropical evergreen forests. Now, if I have to actually take them there, I have to link it. Uh, I'll just come back so that I type this here. I have to link it to Google Earth. I am not adding an image, but I'm adding the link here. Uh, you can see there button URL. I need to add a link. So I basically go back to one of the uh, internet browser uh, tab window and I directly go to Google Earth uh, and there already since I have seen it a number of times so the link is already there I click on that and then it directly takes me to that particular uh, so this is what it shows me it shows the areas it shows exactly where it is uh, located now once I'm done with this I use uh, paste the link over here and it is all done. I can change the title of the button which can be found here or since I'm just showing one particular place, I'm just writing Lakshadweep Islands here. But in case there are a few more, then you can write tropical evergreen forest depending on whatever you would like to have it. So my tags are all ready. The same way as I showed in the previous slide, animals also was there ready. Now what I do is, uh, so my this particular concept map along with the tags are ready for showing it to the children. So when I, uh, when I show it, it uh, just looks like this. I go to areas, it takes me directly to that Google Earth. So at once, at one single uh, point, as in one single uh, concept map, I'm able to show everything. I'm able to show the location. I'm able to show the important geographical conditions which are required where children can take down notes. Also about the plants and animals. So this is what uh, we have uh, tried doing here. This is ThingLink, one tool which will help us to understand uh, uh, the, you know, um, help children to have at one particular place all the uh, concepts available where visually also it's more interesting. Now we move on uh, to the second uh, important uh, tool called Timeline JS. I, I think uh, most of the teachers here agree uh, that uh, children find uh, it very difficult to remember the uh, dates and the years and the events that have occurred. Uh, as we, uh, in the normal classes, we just go, we write down the dates, we write down uh, the, uh, you know, um, the events that have occurred, but normally when uh, children find it very, uh, um, I mean, probably in the class they are uh, able to see, but once it is done, then they tend to forget. Now this timeline, especially with online uh, classroom challenges increase to make it more easy and easier for children to remember. Timeline JS is, uh, helps us, uh, comes to a rescue. Uh, whenever, uh, how do we go ahead with uh, Timeline uh, JS is what I'm going, uh, doing here. Uh, when I look at the, I browse on to any of the uh, internet browsers, it takes me, this is a search result for um, a timeline. Uh, this is this link which I'm going to do it. This is going to what we're going to do uh, live now. Um, this is the screen that comes in when we go in for Timeline JS. Uh, this Timeline JS actually provides us with a ready-made template, a spreadsheet where it looks like uh, something like this. Then we say mark a, make a copy. This is the uh, already uh, the template which is there, but I do not want this. So what I do is uh, I just delete uh, the three rows because I do not want uh, these things to be here. I will prepare a timeline of my own, depending on what is my topic and what is the uh, content there. Um, I will show you all one of the uh, timelines for Gupta Empire. But right now, to help, I mean, make you understand about how uh, this has to be created, I would like to uh, show about the life of Mahatma Gandhi. So here, this is a spreadsheet where I can just start uh, linking, I mean, entering the details. 
and I will be just putting up. So we start with the birth of Mahatma Gandhi. I'll just put up the uh, year or when he was born. The month, this does not take into uh, alphabets. It basically takes the um, in figures, in numbers. So I say 2nd October. Uh, I Whatever fields I would like to update, I can update that. So I directly go to headlines. So I say right here, birth of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. I would like to give a little description about that. So maybe I, I can write about uh, born at Port Bandar uh, and maybe give an exam, uh, given uh, details about his parents and all that. Now I want to put up an image. Now here, uh, what I would do is go and put up a uh, search for uh, pictures of um, Gandhiji. So I click here, I go to, I can select any pictures, whichever rel relevant to uh, the topic. So I go here, whenever I go here, I have to actually paste the link address. So I copy the link, I come back to the Excel uh, sheet and I just have to do control uh, paste. Same way, this is one event that is created. Uh, can I have the mics muted please? Okay, thank you. Uh, teachers, uh, can I? Uh, may I request the participants to please mute themselves? Unfortunately, when I was not able to mute the participants, so sorry, Smita, ma'am, you may continue. No, 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 not an issue. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so I can uh, just put up another event here. Similarly, maybe uh, we can uh, put up as uh, you know uh, establishing of Sabarmati uh, Ashram. So I have, I put up the year, I put up the uh, date and the day. So maybe 6th uh, June, uh, 17 June, sorry. So I put up here, I write uh, Sabar, Sabarmati Ashram. Uh, ashram was established. And then I can add up a more about Sabarmati Ashram. Again, I can go to Google and then type out pictures of Sabarmati. When I have this, uh, I can just copy the link address. I come back here, I paste the URL here. Maybe I'll add one more to show you all uh, the last one, maybe um, about the death of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. So I type in the date and the day, and I just write here, uh, death of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, again, I can put up a picture. This is just to ensure that uh, things are very clear to you all. So I put up one picture of, again, copy the link and paste it over here. Once this is done, uh, if as I was going down here, uh, this particular first uh, site the link which we open, it goes on to the second. So your spreadsheet is done. Now what next you need to do is publish to web. So I come back here, I go to files, I come down, I say publish to web. Once this is done, I select OD1 and then I say publish. It says, okay, uh, you, it asks for your permission. Now what I do is I go back to timeline I go to third step. Third step is where I copy the spreadsheet URL here. So I come here, I copy this link into uh, this particular window. Now I have the entire thing is done. Now I would like to preview how it looks. Now this is what uh, it looks like. Uh, I don't know, the picture should be happy here. It goes to Sabarmati Ashram. Normally, generally, uh, the picture is available here. So when we look at this, it shows the birth of the type things which I entered, 2nd October 1869, the birth of Gandhi and Pur Pandar. 
the picture is available. I'll show you all another one. And the death of Mahatma Gandhi. Now, uh, when I look at, this is the way it looks at uh, things. So I'll just uh, show you all here. Timeline, which is prepared on Gupta Empire. This is about the entire um, timeline about Gupta Empire. So it starts with Chandra Gupta Maurya taking the power, followed by Samudra Gupta succeeding him. So you have pictures available. You have the year, since there's no specific date for this. The year is available here, along with if you feed in the uh, dates and the month and the uh, entire thing is visible here the heading is here and if i want to give any particular information about that uh, slide i mean that time uh, along with the heading then i can write it down here so we have uh, uh, now maybe about a particular uh, king you would like to show his i mean uh, display his contribution either towards economy find out the different type of arts or monuments that was created or maybe the coins that were available um, all those pictures can be highlighted. So children are able to relate it that during this time, this king was there and this was the, uh, those important key points, probably you can put it up here. So they, they can make a note of it and this can be available to children as well. So we have, what are the other important events? When did it happen? So if I don't have the uh, picture or the link, then it, it just looks like this or the image is, it looks like this. This comes to the end of the timeline, where I say by 1550, the Gupta Empire ends. So this is uh, shows the how uh, the picture of the, I mean, the map of the extent of Gupta Empire. So this way we can actually ensure that uh, children are able, uh, children find timelines, I mean, um, the events, the dates, uh, very, uh, I mean, they find it very interesting because they are able to relate it visually as well. Uh, this is a second tool. Third, very important tool. Now, I, I would just like to know uh, from teachers here, um, as online uh, classroom is going on, uh, I hope you people agree that uh, uh, we'd find it very difficult to ensure that all uh, children are participating. Do you all agree? You all can unmute yourselves. And, yes, uh, madam, yes. Yes, so yes, uh, I think we have many of them who agree with that. Um, whenever we ask them a few questions, so we just have a few of them who um, you know, um, answer. And you will normally find those are the ones who are quite active in the regular class as well. But in the regular class, we ensure that we call out those children and uh, the ones who are not answering, who are not very active in the class. In the offline classes, we can actually ask them to stand and answer and get them involved. But in kind of uh, uh, online classes, it's very difficult because the remote learning, in fact, we do not know whether the child is sitting on the other end and listening to us. It becomes very difficult. And with this challenge, uh, actually, when we ask them, uh, we want to collaborate uh, and have a collaborative learning or a flipped learning where we want to involve the children actively in the classroom to do certain activity and also to ensure that all the children are doing it. There is one very important tool that we uh, have tried to explore. It's called as whiteboard file. A normal whiteboard where we, uh, we can ask, uh, we can do the writing. Uh, but this whiteboard file uh, is very interesting because we can actually uh, share it with the entire class. We get to know that the entire class is involved. Also, we can see the work that is being done by uh, the class. For example, if I have to uh, ask the children, okay, come on, write down the important factors of production if I'm uh, supposed to talk about economics. Um, I, am, I want to know, uh, I, I finished the teaching using whatever tool it is, but once I am uh, done, then I want to, maybe as a recapitulation, as a summarization, I want to see how children have um, understood and what, what did they really understand what are the factors of production. So what I can do is I can actually use this to ensure that all are present in the class, they have understood what we have taught. So it's very interesting thing. Normally what happens is when we share a whiteboard or some, some other tool along with and uh, put it on an online platform where you know, we can ask them to collaborate and do it, we end up seeing that uh, one child writes, the other one deletes. So uh, at the end of the class, we actually don't know what is happening. But this ensures that uh, the child is working only on his whiteboard. 
and uh, not fiddling with any other child's uh, content or uh, work. Uh, and he is also able to see the child's screen, I mean, teacher's screen. But as a teacher, if you want to share the work done by the other students, that is also possible here. As Sir was just saying that um, we need to identify and the children uh, who do well, and if the work is re uh, recognized and shown to other students, they feel it very nice. So we have this, uh, this whiteboard pie basically is an excellent tool uh, to help us out here. So I would just like uh, all teachers to get, uh, um, I mean, we can actually collaborate, do a collaborative learning here. Um, when I do a whiteboard pie, uh, search on the Google. This is a screen, this is a search result. So I just go over here, white word fine. Um, this is a screen that comes here. So it's very simple and very, uh, very effective. So what I do is I just create a new class. Uh, I just type in my name, teacher's name, so Smith K, and I create a new class here. Uh, I would request all the teachers to, uh, I mean, as many as possible to actually log in into Whiteboard Pi using this link. So the same way you can share this with your uh, teachers there. Just give me a minute. I'm sharing this link in the chat box. Uh, Kushbu ma'am, can I have a request please? Uh, if you can share this uh, link with them. Sure ma'am. Uh, because I'm unable to do it in my uh, chat box. Uh, no problem ma'am. I'll just type it out. Yes ma'am. Uh, in fact, if you don't have the link, you can just log in into Whiteboard file and use this room code. You can log in as a student and use this room code. Y93P7. Log in into Whiteboard file and uh, log in with this room code. As a student, you can log in. So you get to know how uh, I'll be showing you how teacher's screen looks like and you will get to know how students' uh, screens are available. So now what I do is once students get this code, they log in into whiteboard, fine. I toggle my whiteboard. Now this is a whiteboard that uh, is teacher's whiteboard. Now, if I, I already have a few of them who have logged in, um, I have four of them. So in this way, you can actually get to know how many uh, students have uh, logged in into here. I think I all can see my screen. Um, I have these many students, I have eight of them who have logged in into it. So if it's a class of 30, I will have 30 boards here. So whatever the student is doing on his uh, whiteboard, I can see it. Now, um, for example, I would just like to share one thing here. Um, uh, if I uh, want to do map activity, map marking activity. Now we all have seen during this particular uh, pandemic time, children didn't go out, but our classes were uh, going on and every lesson, uh, literally every lesson of our geography has a map uh, activity, map marking to be done. They, you tell them, okay, get a map. They say, ma'am, we cannot go out and we cannot have a physical uh, I mean, map with us. How do you ensure that the child will practice map marking? This actually comes to our aid. So what I do is I go to image. I, uh, I already have one outline map. So I open it, it gets put up in on my screen. So I have so many students already logged in. I can see here uh, what is going on, what children are doing on their board. So now what I do is I want to ensure that the children are marking on this, I push it. I have these options coming here. It says push to all, uh, push all pages since I just have one page right now. I just push only the current page, push to students. When I say push to students, it says pushing whiteboard, please wait. Now, if you see whatever the children have done on their whiteboard, it actually goes off and the uh, whatever teacher has uh, put up, see, it appears on all the children's uh, whiteboards. 
in case now i i can see a few of them uh, it is not probably because of net issues because of some technical glitches it is not uh, you know uh, it is not uh, embedded here so what i can do i can select the child now for example uh, miss omana um, here it is i i get to see her white board now what i can do is i can go to actions here i want to push that board i go to current page push the uh, white board to the student the current page itself so she has done something so i when i push this it gets pushed to that particular student see it comes to that student as well so in this way i i i can see all of them i have so many in the class and all of them have the map ready with them now i can ask okay um, uh, as an activity i want you all to highlight maharashtra uh, can i have uh, marking out maharashtra as i think we all as teachers social science teachers find it very difficult because children don't uh, you know uh, they do get confused with states so see i i do understand i do get to know that aditi uh, ms aditi has marked it here it's right so what i can do is now i have identified a child who has done it well within uh, the given time so i can just select that board it it is being shared on the screen um, so i can in fact encourage the child the child feels recognized and probably he will take more interest similarly so uh, you know uh, it it is already highlighted maybe there are some who has done a mistake or there's an error now for example uh, there's some error now what i can do is i can call out and maybe erase that particular uh, and ask them to correct so by this activity i actually can ensure uh, that all children are doing the same thing similarly if i want to add pages to it uh, i mean now this is one board now i have done with this activity now i want to do something else suppose if it's an economics class i come to this now how do i do writing content part of it i come here i ask what uh, sorry what are the factors of production i want all of them to uh, maybe at the end of the class i want to ensure that all children uh, have understood and have uh, understood uh, i mean they are have made a note or even if they have not made a note they have it very clearly un, uh, in writing so what i do is i write down the question and i push the board again i can push if i push all the pages the previous uh, thing gets so i just want to have the current this course so whatever is there right now that gets cleared off the second board appears for all the students i think it will take a little uh, time i'll just push it over again push current page pushing whiteboard it pushes to all the students so um, it should be available to all of them the board gets placed in uh, students uh, boards now here i i could see that um, some students or have already started writing uh, the uh, factors of production so this way i can ensure that all children are participating all of them are writing down what is there i'll just try it once again i uh, i can do it specifically for one student or i can do it for everybody it it is possible see it has come down uh, factors of production to all of them now so now they can start writing uh, using that uh, alphabet here there are various other things that you can explore it's a beautiful uh, tool uh, very effective for uh, collaborative learning so this is one on whiteboard what i after the end of this uh, class now you as in uh, probably you have done a map, map marking activity but you need to have certain record of what you have done as it uh, uh, for that particular session you want to keep this as a record because now since we do not have the physical uh, notebook copies or map copies with us Uh, but we still want to ensure mm -hmm. that children have done you want to see it later i can save all these white boards as a pdf so when i click on this it now suppose if i have uh, it's a class of class 9 a particular uh, class class 9 on what date if i want to mention it as uh, 27th feb 
I can write it down. So I know on this particular uh, uh, day, I have conducted a, a, a you know, a map marking activity. You can give, write down something else, any other details that you want to do and save it as PDF. So it gets saved onto your system. This is a way how uh, it looks. The only uh, thing is at the end of it, you can close the room after you have done. Um, you can uh, resume the classes. Suppose you just lock it and go. You can come back and resume by using the same folder. Uh, you want some other teachers to come also uh, along with you, you can invite co-teachers. So it's a wonderful app where you can do team teaching, you can uh, have uh, teachers and students collaborating together. Uh, so this is one app which we have tried to explore and have used it effectively to uh, a great extent. Uh, this is one. Um, thank you all uh, teachers uh, for actively doing the map work. Uh, going ahead, we have another few tools that I'll just be uh, exploring here. Uh, this is Google Street tool. Uh, I Svita, you are, uh, we can't hear you. Uh, Kushbu, can you just see what it is? Uh, sure, so I believe Ms. Smita is facing some uh, network issues. Um, Smita, ma'am, if you're able to listen to no. us. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, we are not able to see your screen and can't hear you, ma'am. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, ma'am. Just a minute. Uh, okay, I'll just come back to the Zoom meeting, ma'am. Just give me a minute. Sure, ma'am. Meanwhile, I would just like to definitely mention that the resources shared so far are very interesting and very helpful for the teachers. I'm sure each one of us will explore the same. Any feedback from any of our participants? Do you have any such tools other than this we have explored? <clears throat> you can, yeah, she has come back. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, sir. I just was, uh, there was a technical uh, issue, I don't know. <laughs> Um, as I was just saying, we have, uh, I was just going ahead with the uh, Google uh, Street View. Uh, as we were, uh, I was just, just talking that we have certain lower classes and middle school uh, children, uh, when we are talking to them about certain uh, areas or certain uh, monuments and all, if you want to uh, want them to see, and most of them must have not visited, but then uh, we can take them on a virtual tour. So when I say Google Street View of Taj Mahal, it takes me to this, so I can just go for Google View Treks. Now this basically uh, looks like this. Uh, when I it's more of more of Google Maps, but I want to take a closer look at the monument. I want to show them uh, about the uh, monument. Uh, the road map is also available. Now I want to take a scroll at uh, the Taj Mahal. I want to see it a closer view. So what I can do is uh, it it shows me this way. So I, uh, it shows me arrow marks, so I can go to whichever angle I want. I can actually travel like a, a tourist there. So I can go as close as I want until and unless the photography uh, uh, area is uh, prohibited. Um, so I, if I want to look at things here, uh, I just go around. Uh, I can actually go here as well. So it shows me a 360 uh, view of uh, the Taj Mahal. So it's very interesting uh, to, uh, See here, now for example, if I have to go on top here, I can directly click, so I'm on top. So as I'm, uh, I'm seeing here, if I want to look around, uh, we enjoy uh, as uh, physically going there uh, probably may not be possible and maybe many of our children may, may have not visited those places. 
I can take them uh, as a teacher, I can take them on a virtual tour. Children will enjoy uh, going around and seeing it very closely. So you can see here, it is all being done. Um, I can, as I mean, I can go around uh, the place as well. So there are arrow marks. So it takes me here. I want to go towards the uh, main arc. I want to go ahead, go walking over here around. Again, uh, I can actually usually tour around uh, the entire. Uh, so this is a main entrance where uh, I can see. So this is a main door. Uh, I um, since um, normally even if you generally go to uh, Taj Mahal, um, you are not allowed to take photographs inside. So um, I am going around everywhere. So this they actually helps us uh, to you know children to have a very beautiful look. You can take up any other uh, monuments or anything for that matter, and show them the 360 view uh, of that particular monument and Taj Mahal being one of the best here. So this is what uh, we have about Google uh, Street View. So very close view of uh, this. So even if I just leave it, I don't click, it virtually takes me over there. It keeps running around. Uh, so children can have a look at the entire very closely. Uh, then we have, we come down to something called as Flickr. Uh, Flickr basically, uh, if you uh, have to, I mean, it allows us to upload and organize collection of photos and videos all in one place. Uh, what we have done here is uh, you can directly uh, look in for um, you are teaching Western Ghats or you are teaching Himalayas and you want to show them beautiful pictures. We can uh, orally we can to, uh, put up. So these are some of the um, uh, tools that actually help in teaching and uh, collaborative learning. Now we, uh, I request uh, Roshni ma'am to uh, help us out to understand uh, about assessing and more collaborative work, which we can do with the children. At the end of each class, probably uh, we would like to see whether whatever we have done using all tools and concepts are being taught. Uh, we would still like to know how uh, assessment can be done. Uh, we have a few more things here. So I will, uh, we have Roshni ma'am here to help us out. Good evening, everyone. I'm Roshni. So I am here to teach you about more about other collaborative tools which we can use in our classrooms. One such tool is Padlet. It is a tool where the teachers can collaborate with the whole class itself. And we can actually see the students working as we have just seen in whiteboard file. We can actually see the students working. So in this tool as well, we can see actually the students working along with the teacher. It also helps the teacher to keep the whole class engaged, right? So the teacher can keep an eye on the slow learners, especially on the naughty children at times, and also on the children who are hesitant to speak in group. Let us see how it works. This is how Padlet looks like. When I go to Google search, when, whenever you go to Google search, you can type Padlet here. then it will take you to this particular page. Then you can just log in by using your Google account or your Gmail address. As I've already logged in, it will take me to this page. And as you can see on my screen, I have created few of the Padlets for my sections, which I take, right? So this is an example. Here, there is a plus button, as you can see in the right-hand side corner. I can click on that plus button and I can write whatever I want to ask, like what is the name of our prime minister, name of our prime minister, and the students can also view the same at the same time. There is a share button here. You can see a share button here. You can copy the URL link and you can paste it in your chat box and the students can see what the teacher has sent and the students can also write the answer at the same time. You can see it, here is an example of student who has written the answer. I've given him a question, what is the difference between weather and climate? So this particular student has answered me. So similarly, if you have class of 30 or 40 students, you can see actually all the students writing the answers on your screen. Another thing, good thing about Padlet is that you can also record the questions or you can record few of the things that you want to uh, share with your classroom and with your students. And you can also send the same recording 
to the students in Padlet. Here is an example, like, okay. so you can record. So here is a recording that I have done. What is the capital of Karnataka? So this Padlet gives you a opportunity to record for almost 10 minutes recording you can do. Even the children can record their things like, it can also be used in lower classes wherein the teacher can ask the student to record uh, of the poems or rhymes and all, and they can send it to the teacher. So this is definitely a very useful tool that we can use. Next. The next tool, which is again, a very fun tool for conducting assessment at the end of class is quizzes. This is also a very interesting tool. And at the end of the class, the teacher can understand by conducting a small quiz, how much a child has understood. So this is quizzes. Let us see how it looks like. This is how quizzes looks like. The operation is again the same. You have to go to Google, you have to type quizzes.com and you have to log in by using your, either your Gmail account or your uh, Microsoft or Google account and you can easily create the quizzes. There is a button here which says create, create a quiz. You can name the quiz, maybe natural resources. You can select social studies and say next. And this gives you an option of giving any type of questions. You can give multiple choice questions. You can give open-ended questions. You can give them fill in the blanks and as, and other questions you can always explore. Suppose I, I'll write that what are, what is Chota Nagpur Plateau region. I can give such questions to them and I can give them options. And you can select the right answer. Come on, please uh, mute your mic. Yeah. So after you give them the options, you can actually select how much time you want to give the students. You can give them five seconds to answer this particular question. You can give them 10 seconds or whatever time you feel like. So I'll select five seconds and I'll say save. And the quiz is created. Then you can give a number of questions, how many, whatever you want. You can see that I've already created in my library. You can see, we can see how many quizzes we have created and we can use this quiz whenever we want. So it is again, a very fun way of conducting the assessment as well as we can know that how much of how many students have understood the concept. Going back again. There is another tool which is called as Quizlet. It is also another way of conducting a quiz that way in a fun, fun manner and try conducting this. And I have done this in my class and you can see the smile on your student's face, which is called as Quizlet. Again, the things are all the same. You have to go to Google and you can type quizlet.com and you can open, you can log in through to Quizlet through your Gmail ID, or you can also log in through your Google account. And once you have logged in, you can create as many quizzes as you want. I have created a small quiz, which tells us about the neighboring countries of India and their capitals. And this quizlet gives me an opportunity to conduct a quiz in various manners, as you can see here, through flashcards or through test or through match or gravity. I'll just show you how it looks like. Flashcards. This is just a flashcard. Nepal. What is the capital of Nepal? Kathmandu. What is the capital of Bhutan? Timfu. So like this, in a flashcard mode, you can show it to your children. If you want to conduct the same thing as in a test manner, when you press test, the computer has automatically converted the quiz that I have created into, the, into a test form. You can see it has asked students to write a few questions. It has uh, given the same questions in match the following. It has given the same questions as multiple choice, true and false. 
the computer has automatically taken my questions and it has automatically generated a test on its own. If the same test I want to give them and match the following, let us see how it looks like. This is how it looks like. The child has to just drag and put it in the right box. Like Bhutan, Timfu or Dhaka, Bangladesh. If I try to put it in the wrong box, it will not take it. See, I'm trying to put it in the wrong box. So the students can learn what is the correct answer by using this particular tool. The same quiz, if I want to give them as gravity, get started. See how the question is falling down. Now the child has to quickly write down the answer before that thing drops down. It is actually a fun way of conducting a quiz. So the questions will keep dropping down and the star student has to answer before it drops down. Just like the game which we play during our childhood, right? So yes, these are a few of the tools that we can use to evaluate, to assess, and that too in a fun manner. We can collaborate with the children and we can actually make them enjoy studying social science. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we are here uh, since we just shared uh, a few tools, which, uh, as I said, would just like to summarize that some tools were used for um, as a teaching aid, learning, uh, teaching certain topics um, like Thingling, uh, Google Earth, and uh, we have timelines as well. There were certain tools which we saw was uh, ideal for uh, collaborative learning, flipped learning. Uh, and we have, as ma'am has just shown a few uh, tools for assessment. Um, there was a little, um, I mean, I had just shown you all about Thingling, but this is a screenshot. You all can probably take a screenshot of this as a handout where a few of our participants were asking, uh, can we have a handout? Probably you can take a screenshot of how you can create a concept map and the entire uh, teaching aid under Thingling. Uh, this is about, uh, next slide, ma'am. Uh, you all can take up the uh, screenshot of this as well, how to create a, a you know, mark on Google Earth um, because of certain technical glitches, uh, probably live I couldn't uh, show in the uh, other thing, but then when we were doing the uh, creating one, it was uh, quite helpful. This is for timelines. Um, I showed you all stepwise, so it helps us to uh, even when in the spread, in the entire link itself of timelines to JS, uh, it, it is very clear and very easy to prepare uh, the timeline and probably we'll be able to help our children out uh, in remembering the dates and the events uh, in a much more uh, interesting manner. Uh, we have tried to share uh, whatever we could uh, and whatever we have tried to explore. Thank you so much for the patient listening and uh, uh, also helping us out and probably, uh, sir, I would uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to share in the platform to share what we are doing. Thank you, Smita, and thank you, Roshni. Wonderful presentation. Thank you, thank you so A much. A very sir. wonderful presentation. Thank you. Sir. And uh, I think uh, the participants have uh, quite a good uh, number of kids for a take, take home. And uh, more importantly, participants will have to explore. I mean, the guidelines are OK. The, the processes have been shown. But one thing, you know, this tools can be used for any subject. How can these tools support different cognitive levels also is something that you can look at. Which tool address the lower order of thinking and which tools address higher order of thinking? I mean, these are certain things we have to keep in mind. And uh, think of these tools for creation, like producing something. Smita said flipped learning where they produce something. Can be broadcasting as we have seen some of the tools were used for broadcasting. And coding, it's going to be another language which is very important for futuristic learning and technology. And uh, animation, video, uh, students can create their own and there are certain uh, options there in these kits where you can create video, you can share video. 
and uh, learning using technology, designing, inventing, and constructing. It's very important. And I think you might have seen how our uh, Roshni and Smita have explored. Uh, I, I think uh, you need to go and explore. Focus should not be on the tools also. Yes, itself. But how the tools could be a vehicle, a vehicle in transforming the students' thinking skills. Uh, so you will have, as a teacher, you know, which tools would be used for what. Because who students are, what they know, you know. So in that way, it was a wonderful session. But still, uh, I would uh, like if some of the participants could share something or would like to ask or would like to know more about anything so that we can plan and organize accordingly in future. Any voices of participants? Yeah, good evening, sir. I'm Aditi from Bangalore. Yes. Yeah, the session was really very interesting, sir. Everybody tells that social is a dry subject, actually. But yeah, uh, with yeah. the help of these tools, we can uh, surely make the students understand very well. And even we will get to know about the tools where, and we'll also learn a lot along with these tools. Surely we'll implement it, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Somebody asked for more sessions. Yes, we'll come back to that. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. Good evening, sir. I am Selvi Shuri. Yeah. From Ramko Vidyalaya, sir. Mm. Uh, it, the session is very informative and uh, creative thinking also is more. It, mm. Thank you, sir. Thank good evening, you. sir. Good evening. Omina Joseph from Kochi. Mm, and yeah. the session is very interesting and informative. Mm -hmm. Madam, not only given the tools, but also given the track to how to use it and find out in the Google. And surely this will be implemented in our class and we are hoping that our classroom become a lively class for teaching. Good evening, sir. So this is Veena from Bangalore National School. So the session was very informative and creative and interesting, very useful session. How to integrate? Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening. I am vice, vice principal from Ramko Vidyalaya. Yes. It is very excellent and informative, sir. So far, I have attended many webinars, but mm. this is one of the most very useful ones, sir. So yeah. we need like this more, sir. Yeah, Please. It goes, it goes very, for very our speakers. Yeah, they have done a lot of work, hard work. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Mm. I am Revati. I am coming from uh, Magarish Vidya Mandir Rajapalayam. Mm. Very informative, very useful to teachers and the in students also very enjoy and then study the social science because three subjects are up to four subjects. They covered in one subject. So they have to interested and then they have to attend the quiz also. Very, very interesting, sir, that session. Uh, teachers are also very easy to use this. Thank you so much. From Uttarakhand, uh, AGS Bhimtal. It was really, really very informative uh, session. We really enjoyed it. Usually webinars are not very interesting, but this was really, really wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Good evening, sir. This is Veena from Bangalore Gopala National School. Yes. So the webinar was very interesting and informative. Not only integrating the technology during this pandemic, we can use the technology during our normal classes and we can use the yeah. different tools to our, assist our children. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm Sonali Parthan from uh, the Samhita School, Bangalore. I just wanted to understand, you said uh, the tools could be vehicles for students. Uh, so can you elaborate a little on that? Uh, I think you might have seen uh, all these tools had a lot of student engagement. It is right, uh, it's not that the teacher only uh, uh, engage, I mean, talks about it or uh, uh, goes through a procedure. Students are very, very engaged. They think 
they participate, they involve. So all this creates a sense of, but it's not only a participation, uh, they also become a very integral part of thinking, learning, understanding. So in that way, it becomes a vehicle of, for thinking as well. So it gives a lot of learning outcome. So it's not only a process of teaching, it's also a very great, valuable student engagement platform. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. This is SK Mohammed Jairul from Odisha. Yes. Uh, I am just 26. I have just, I've just started my career two years back. Welcome to our teaching yes. faculty. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I'm presently teaching in St. Javier's High School in Baripata. Yeah. I just started my career two years back. Mm -hmm. So I am very new to this profession. And I always wanted to be a good social science teacher. And I have been trying to inculcate a lot of information so that I can be a good social science teacher. Mm -hmm. But this session, uh, today's session definitely enriched me. Uh, it gave me a lot of information regarding how to teach social science more effect effectively, efficiently by using the existing technology. We all are using mobile phones, but today I get to know a, uh, a lot of, about a lot of new apps and other things. We are using, but we are not actually using these things. So definitely, definitely it's going to help us and definitely we'll try to use all this technology during our regular classes. Okay. And thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Most thank Good evening, sir. I am Ashwati from Kuwait. Oh. As you said in the introduction, it's very glad to come back to our homeland. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving yeah. us an opportunity to attend the webinar. And uh, most of the things we are practicing in our schools, the one which you have shared with us, but uh, we have learned a few more which were new to us. Thank you for that. And uh, sir, we want more webinars to be conducted. Good evening, sir. Really? So I'm Ramila once again from Kuwait. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Uh, very, very thank you to you because after long, we have seen such a session. We have attended many sessions and this is one of the best. And I'm sure all the panel members will agree to it. Every, everyone will be agreeing. And you said that, yes, sir, we and our students also are very much connected to India. Though we are far away from India, we are connected to social science. We bring them in that period, we bring them back to India. Mm. whole day they must be away from India, of course, far away from that country. But that period, definitely out of 100%, maybe 75%, we bring them back to our motherland. And as we teach social studies, sir, we are connecting them and they're very much they are in love with our country also. So we are far away, very much true social science. And these activities, of course, we do most of them as the other teacher told. Few of them definitely will, uh, will try to do it. And please have such uh, webinars more with us also Middle East. Don't forget us, sir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, I, I we told you now, I'm going to have exclusive program for you. And I think yes, uh, in our uh, data, we have nearly about uh, uh, 200 teachers who have already participated in various programs. And uh, uh, people like you joining uh, uh, slowly. We, no, we, we came to know now only, sir, about this TD. Uh, we did not know before. I'm not sure, but we are. I wish we could know before, sir. I wish, but uh, it's never too late for anything. Yeah, we are sending to your principals because uh, yes, we sir. don't have your email IDs. We are sending all these invitations to all the principals across the Middle East, all the countries. Uh, some principals forward it, some principals probably uh, uh, have, they may have such programs in their own schools. So, anyway, uh, it's nice to be connected. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. So, the time is uh, 8 9 now. Uh, it's time for us to conclude. Uh, first of all, I should thank uh, all the participants. And it's interestingly, among all the subjects that we conducted so far, this month was a month for use of technology in various subjects. Every Saturday we have this. And this is the last Saturday of the month and the highest number of participants for social science. Uh, really, we touched 95 participants. Of course, some of them could not join for various reasons, but they have registered. So 95 participants uh, were, uh, were eager to participate 
So social science is in the higher order of uh, trying to adapt technology. And thank you all the participants for joining us. And thank you, Smita. Thank you, Roshni. Thank you, Kushbu. Of course, you will have your last word as to conclude. And uh, thank you, uh, Vijaya, who is there to help us. And I think all of you are connected with her in terms of uh, registration. She does uh, work right throughout the night. And also this evening also around, uh, even at 5.50, some registration happened and she quickly sent the link. So uh, we are trying to see how well we can accommodate all of you. And uh, thank you all. And hope to see you again, Pushbu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, as always, thanks to TD Educational and Charitable Trust for this platform. As I see in the chat box, every participant has thoroughly enjoyed this. And as they've also said that mostly webinars are not enjoyable, but they've not only gained experience, but they've also enjoyed this time. And uh, of course, addressing the chat box queries, yes, we will conduct more such webinars as Sir said. And uh, Uh, people in the chat box are saying that they need more people like you in the education system. So thanks a lot for providing the guidance and the mentorship. And of course, thanks Roshni ma'am and Smita ma'am for that wonderful session. Uh, as a teacher, as an English teacher, even I learned a lot of things today. And thanks a lot for joining our webinar today, participants.